Phenytoin is an anti-seizure medication that is tested a lot on the NCLEX because of its narrow therapeutic window and risk for toxicity. In this mnemonic video, we'll make sure you're up to speed on everything you need to know about phenytoin for test day. These troublemaking kids are playing around a phone tower. Not their brightest idea, but before we talk about the kids, let's focus on the phone tower. This phone tower will serve as your memory anchor to phenytoin. You know, a phone tower for phenytoin, because phone tower and phenytoin sound pretty similar. You may sometimes hear phenytoin called by its trade name, Delantin, but the NCLEX will always use the generic name of phenytoin. So just remember this phone tower and you'll be good to go. The phone tower has been built with these anti-shake shocks. I mean, we definitely don't want the phone tower coming down in an earthquake or other disaster. These anti-shake shocks improve stability by preventing the phone tower from shaking. By the way, these anti-shake shocks remind me of how phenytoin is used to treat seizures because both work to stop shaking, get it? Phenytoin is effective in treating both tonic-clonic and partial seizures. It works by inhibiting the flow of sodium ions, stopping the repetitive neuron firing that causes seizures. Now that we know what phenytoin does, let's move on to learn about its side effects. Take a look at that sign by the phone tower. It's warning people to not climb up too high on the phone tower because it's super dangerous up there. Just like people can get hurt from climbing too high up a phone tower, it's dangerous to have high levels of phenytoin in the blood. When the phenytoin level rises above a certain cutoff range, patients will develop symptoms which we call acute toxicity. So what exactly is this cutoff range? Let's find out. Back to those kids. The girl here dared her friend to climb the phone tower despite all the warning signs. In fact, she even said she'd give him two $10 bills. That's $20 for those of you keeping score at home. These are both important numbers to remember, 10 and 20. You see, phenytoin has a very narrow therapeutic range of 10 to 20 milligrams per milliliter. Below this range, the dose isn't effective and the patient might still develop seizures. However, if we go above the high end of this range, toxicity can occur leading to many harmful side effects. Speaking of which, next, let's talk about what side effects to watch out for in case of phenytoin toxicity. Kids will do anything for $20. Despite the warnings, the boy climbed the tower and he looks like he's about to fall. You can use this boy falling as a symbol for ataxia because ataxia is just a fancy term for impaired balance and coordination. In other words, you can expect someone with ataxia to fall or stumble a lot like this boy, get it? Ataxia is an important symptom of phenytoin toxicity and as with any of these toxicity symptoms, it should be reported to the provider if noticed. The boy is yelling out for help, but the shock of the situation has caused the words to come out all slurred. Which reminds me, slurred speech is another possible symptom of phenytoin toxicity. The girl is starting to get nervous. Maybe breaking the rules wasn't such a good idea after all. She's looking side to side to keep a lookout for the authorities. The way she is moving her eyes side to side is similar to nystagmus. Nystagmus is a condition where the eyes make repetitive, uncontrolled movements side to side. This may be a pretty subtle symptom in patients, so as the nurse, keep a close eye on their eyes, okay? These three adverse effects, ataxia, slurred speech, and nystagmus, are the most common signs of phenytoin toxicity. Like I mentioned before, they should be reported to the provider immediately if seen, and you'll likely be instructed to hold the next dose of phenytoin until blood work can be verified. Last but not least, let's talk about one side effect that isn't related to toxicity, but rather is a general side effect of taking phenytoin, even at normal doses. Take a close look at the girl's bubble gum. It's hard to miss the way she's blowing it in a big bubble. Here at Pixarize, we use big bubble gum as our symbol for gingival hyperplasia, because gingival hyperplasia is really just a fancy way of saying overgrowth of gum tissue. Big bubble gum to symbolize big gums. Gingival hyperplasia is an expected side effect of phenytoin. It can often be controlled with good oral hygiene and regular dentist visits. Unlike the effects of toxicity we talked about earlier, gingival hyperplasia is not a reason to stop the medication. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. Phenytoin is an anticonvulsant drug used to treat seizures. Phenytoin has a narrow therapeutic range of 10 to 20 micrograms per milliliter. High doses of phenytoin above this cutoff can lead to symptoms of acute toxicity. These symptoms include ataxia, slurred speech, and nystagmus. The provider should be notified immediately if these symptoms are seen. Another expected side effect of phenytoin is gingival hyperplasia, so encourage your patients to practice good oral hygiene and visit the dentist regularly. And now we're actually done with phenytoin. Let's be sure to keep those kids off the phone tower. See you next time. Thanks for watching.
For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.